I wanted to take a brief moment to go through a quick demonstration of how to navigate the PharmaSim simulation. So to start your simulation, you'll need to go to interpretive.com. That's where we can log in. You'll get your login information uh, after you purchase the license following the instructions that should have been sent to you from Interpretive. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And you'll see potentially a different login screens due to you having a student account and I have an instructor account. Uh, but you, there's two portions to it. First, there's this main area that you see here where it has a dashboard that can tell us um, our schedule and whatnot. Uh, simulation is how we'll open the simulation. I'll talk about that in a moment when we show how to launch it. You've got the results. So if you click results, here you can see how your team is doing versus others. We've got the resources. Under here I want to point out there's the student manual and the case video. And definitely uh, skim the manual and you definitely want to watch that video. There are some things that are stressed there and some information about customers that can be useful that aren't so obvious in other parts of the simulation. So that's a great resource. There's also a help. If you need any help, you can click that. Email the PharmaSim team. They have an outstanding customer service team and they're very responsive. And if they're not able to help you in, in short order, you can also email me and I'll try to follow up with them too to rush it along. But once you've kind of um, got your license, you've read the manual, skimmed it, looked at the video, you're ready to start the simulation, uh, you can always launch it with clicking the simulation. And I'm going to launch the demo. Now one thing to note about the simulation, there's two different simulations you're effectively going to play. You're going to play the first round called the benchmark that you play as an individual. If you're playing by yourself, you'll play one round, get some feedback on how your stock did and whatnot, and then you get to hit replay and then play that round again. So kind of a do-over uh, to see how you might do things differently. After that point, the team play will start, and then as a team, you'll again play that first round. So for that first meeting, you should have some good ideas about what you want to do, because you can see uh, what worked well for different people, right? And then once you start this simulation, you'll see inside this screen, we have introduction. So again, there's some links here to the case and other information you might find useful. I want to talk a bit about the menu structure we have. Uh, so up here, towards the top right, is the different periods. So within any report, we can click on the period to see where we're at um, for the information there. So for instance, if we're in period four, looking at a pricing report, and we want to see, well, what did it look like in period three? We can just click period three, and it will go there. It's kind of a tab structure uh, for that, which is nice. And it always keeps your stock price up here too, which is quite useful. So these links are how you access the reports that'll help you make your decisions. So under company, you can see there's four different reports, the dashboard, performance summary, income statement, product contribution. These reports are generally good to see your general results. How did you do? What were the financial outcomes? In particular, one I want to point out is in the dashboard, a section called company messages. You absolutely want to look at this each time. In fact, it's probably one of the first things you want to look at. And so it's the way for the simulation to give you feedback on things that may not be going well. And so generally, if it tells you to go check something out or to go look at something or if something's problematic, you need to make some changes in that area. Uh, it's certainly not misleading. And the other thing to note on this screen is this social media feedback. This is a way to just kind of tap into what's kind of the gossip on the street, what's being said about your product. Um, it's kind of a nice little uh, qualitative piece, in a sense, to give you some information that's not really any other place there. The other thing I want to point out under the company is under performance summary, uh, there's a lot of detailed information here that you'll need to use to figure out, well, what's driving my results? Is it a sales problem, a pricing problem, a spending problem, and so on. I also want to point out that for all these reports, you want to make sure early on to go through all of them and just see what all is there to get familiar. For instance, this report has a nice nugget of the trade rating, which tells you how happy the trade and the retailers and wholesalers are with what you're doing. And so if they're not very happy, they're not going to promote your product. And so there's some of these reports have little nuggets like that that may not be other places, 
but can be quite useful for seeing how well you're doing uh, for that. The other thing I want to point out here is under the product contribution report, as in a lot of the reports, we can get a trend. I only have one period here, but as we have more periods, we'll see a trend, uh, which can be a nice way visually to see how you're doing. Also on this report and some others, you have the option to do it as total dollars, as it is now, or I can do things as a per unit and switch back and forth, uh, which can be, you know, both of those can have some advantages according to how you prefer to see it. So that's how you do generally with your company reports. The market, so this is where we can buy a lot of our research. Now, some of these are free, like the industry outlook, and some of those you get every time. Uh, others you need to buy. Generally, that check mark tells you that you've purchased it. So for the start, it's kind of bought everything for you to begin. But in future rounds, you'll have to decide what to purchase. One thing I would say here is that in general, you're a pretty big company in this simulation. And relatively, the cost of research is pretty small. And so if you think a piece of research is going to help change a decision, in most cases here, it's going to be worth it to spend that money. Um, because if you can move the needle just a little bit, you're a big enough company where it's going to pay off and have a good ROI. There's other reports under a consumer survey. And here you can see there's seven different reports. And you tend to buy these as a batch. So if you buy the consumer survey, you get all of these reports. And what's nice is that on some of these, I'll show you for one, you have the option for cross-section. What this lets you do is see the report for just a subgroup, maybe a target segment that you want to know how it does. Now, in the early rounds, you cannot do those cross-sections, but later you'll be able to define that and see it in a more refined way, which is really useful when you get more into the targeting and figure out what groups you want to go after. For the decisions, so you have eight different screens here, and each one you essentially go into that panel and enter what your decisions are going to be for that period. So for example, if I look at the pricing one, right, you would enter what is the price you want to have. So right now, you're priced at 529 suggested retail. This is what you want to change it to. All right, so if I want to change it to 539, I can do it here. If I save it, then when I advance, those will be what is used. And also, as you have multiple products, you'll see them up here on the left. So you can do it for each product separately. Right now, we just have the one all around. But in later rounds, you will be adding other products. And so you'll need to do that decision for each one um, separately. It's also worth pointing out this budget number here. What this will do is as you're making decisions, it will keep track of how much of your budget you've spent as well as how much you have remaining. So here I've spent all my budget. So if I spend any more, I've got to take money out of somewhere else. And it won't let you advance the round unless you're under that budget number. Next, we can take a look at the analysis menu. The four different tools here. You can look through those and see if you find them useful. One I will point out is the pricing analysis. And so this is telling me I didn't save my changes. I'm okay with that. For the pricing analysis, this is a nice one to do a little break even. Right? So if I want to change my price to 539, then if I hit update, it will tell me if I raise my price to that, sales can't drop below 62.3 million from the current 63 million, or it won't pay off. I gotta be too much lost sales and units um, that I won't make as much money. So this is a nice way if you're thinking of a price change that you can put in that price and see, well, how much do units have to change? How much do I think my sales will drop? And that'll give you some insight on whether that makes sense. Um, the last thing is once you've got all your decisions in and you're happy with them, uh, one place to look at all of them is the decision summary. So I recommend doing this as the very last part of each period. Make sure the decisions are nice. In particular, check this decision alert and see if it's giving you any warnings. So here I have not entered a decision for the special decision and I have not allocated anything for digital. So it's a red flag that I may want to go back and fix those things. Once I have it how I like it, um, then I can hit advance and move to the next round. That's kind of my final answer for submitting this. One thing to note is that only the team leader can advance for your team, just so multiple people don't accidentally do it. And the team leader is just randomly chosen to be one of you. Um, and so you'll need that person to log in and actually hit advance to, to go forward. 
The other thing is you don't see it here because this is an instructor account, but there'll be an option that I've given you to have one replay as a team. So at some period, if you advance, you see your results and you're not very happy with them and you see you didn't do near as well as the other teams and you know what you would do differently, you can hit replay and you get that do-over on that round. Before you hit that replay, one suggestion I would make is to look at the reports for that next period because you can see uh, some additional information about what maybe went wrong and that'll give you some better insight into how to play it differently. But I hope that helps give you an overview of the different pieces of the game, how you're going to navigate it uh, and play it. And best of luck and enjoy it.